everyone, it's Rachel here from Rachel and Bella Crafts. Thanks for joining me again for another video. I hope you're all well. Um, in today's video, I am going to be demonstrating how we make these cute little envelopes. Aren't they lush? So you can peg these into your journal. You can pop them onto the top of a page. You can use a paper clip. You can put them into a pocket. Loads of things you can do with them. Um, and the great thing about them is inside you have a little pocket. And then if you open it up, you have journaling space so you can write little notes and things in there and nobody's ever going to see them because they're going to be folded up and tucked away nice and neatly in your cute little envelope with its little closure okay so without further ado let's show you how to do it so th these are a great project for using up these six by six uh, pads um, and the one thing I like about using them is that they are square, they cut to shape and you know that you're going to get the angles correct. So the first thing you're going to do is take your piece of paper and we are just simply going to fold it, oops, fold it in half. So match your, your, your triangles at the top and try and get your point down as tight as you can. I mean, okay, if there's a little bit of overlap, it's not going to be the end of the world. But if you want a really nice, neat finish, obviously you want to try and get that as square as possible. Okay. There we are. So open that back up. Now, the next step is to bring this bottom um, corner here to the, to the centre here. Um, now, I think I showed you in the last video when we were doing it, the other envelopes um, about using the grid on your mat to just square things up when you're trying to fold um, paper. Um, now, this is a great opportunity to use the squares on your mat. So if you can see, I've just literally popped it on one line there, one line there. You can take a ruler now at this point if you like and just put it just to the side of your, your marker and then where you've got your fold across the centre, just on that centre marker, just put a little dot and that'll just give you a guideline. You don't have to do that. You can just eyeball it from knowing that you're on the same line and just take it up. But we are literally just going to join that across there like that. Um, my goodness, who knew it would be so technical folding one small little triangle of paper? <laughs> but no, we want to try and get it squared if we can. So there we go. One triangle fold over and then I'm simply going to fold up now the bottom piece. I'm going to do that again really slowly just in case I did it too fast. So the first fold was folding it in half and we've opened it back up. Then we've taken this corner here and we're folding that to the centre, which we just scored with our little pencil. And then we're going to fold this flap up. OK, so you should now have what looks like a bit of a pyramid shape. Now, I know because I've already made a few of these today that from here to here, this is 21 centimetres. So I'm going to cheat a bit and use my board I hope you can see that on there now and by simply popping this on to the bottom line here I know that if I take this corner and fold this corner to the number seven hopefully this will work now and fold it in and then bring this corner and fold him over to the 14 there we go we had a really simple bit of mathematics there now and there we go so you should now have a shape that looks like this. Um, the final but one fold. Now we're going to make a little fold. We're going to take this tail end back. And again, I do just cheat, cheat with this and I put it back onto the ruler at the bottom because I know that half of seven is three and a half. And I'm going to aim for the fold to be on three and a half. But if you take in your, um, if you're taking this bit here right the way over, it should land centered anyway because the bottom there should meet with this corner here. I hope I'm explaining that well now. So you can see I've got my flap here, which was, which was the piece over there, and I've just taken it backwards on itself. So I'm giving it a bit of a broken leg, okay? So we just do that, and we're gonna just fold it in. Sorry, I've got glue on my finger. And then bring the, the, the flap bit back up, and you're gonna open it like a duck beak. And you're going to pop, pop your finger inside just to loosen the, the, the paper fold. And then you're going to fold it back on itself to make a lovely diamond shape. Because that is your closure. Okay. So just to go over that again, we've, we've opened them. We folded these in now, one on to other. And then we folded this one back, broken its leg. 
and then we're going to just pop it into the center and then we've got a nice diamond shape so that's your closure done and then the last step is simply to fold down the top now when you're folding down the top you want to aim for your this little peak bit here to be halfway into the, this our diamond because otherwise it's not going to stay closed does that make sense so like when i was demonstrating to you about making the other envelopes about leaving that nice like centimeter there that's what we're going to be aiming for here as well so fold that down there and then that should tuck perfectly in there can you see i'm going to do that again right so that's the first one let's try it with a different bit of paper this time okay so let's use this i'm going to let's put it on the inside i think so we're going to simply, let me bring my board back down a minute. We're going to fold in half. So try and get those as square as you can. I know not every piece of paper is perfectly, um, I can see this one's out already, but that's okay. That's okay, we can work with that. And then bring that back down, line it up on your on your grid so you've just got a bit of an eye line and you know that you're working with a straight shape even though my shape is slightly out but we'll see if this works out now and then bring it up following your eye should be following the line and you'll know if you've got it right because when you fold this bottom line here should be running adjacent to you know if you bring it up to a line it should be a nice straight line and you're still on your on your fold at the top so again you're going to take that piece of paper over again You've now got your pyramid shape okay now this paper is a little bit thicker than that paper so i'm just going to use my bone folder just to really flatten that down because we don't want the spring in about we want it to stay nice and flat in the journal um and again then down on the line okay so this one's just slightly over 21 but that's fine and i'm going to just bring it across a third so whatever your measurement is that you're working with you need to come across to a third and take it up and then bring this one across and then take that up now you can see now the importance of using a square bit of paper for this because my piece of paper wasn't actually square and i'm a little bit out on the top there but i'm not going to split hairs it doesn't really matter we're not going to see that when the envelope shut so we don't worry about it too much um i'm going to fold that back bring it in half and then you're going to open your beak and squiggle him down. Oh, that's my washing machine finished. Sorry about the beeping. And then we've got our diamond shape. And then the last step then is to bring down the top, pop that back in line with that there. And hey presto, we've got a really groovy envelope. Look at that. Cool. Okay, let's do another one. Right, another paper that would be really awesome to make these in is some embossed paper. So I don't know if any of you are into embossing your papers, but you know I've got, um, I'm doing a boho journal next. So I'm thinking, right, well, I might try and start building up a bit of a stash now and have it on theme, you know. So this is pointless to be building up all this uh, ephemera and all these envelopes and stuff if I'm not going to be able to use them. Now, when you're working with embossed paper, just try to be really careful when you're folding because it can sometimes tear or pop out or fall apart. It's, it, when we emboss the paper, it becomes quite brittle, doesn't it? So, so just, you know, you can do it, it'll work, but just go really gently with it when you're folding. So again, we're gonna take that flap in there and then we're gonna bring this one over here. And that's a much better square like that. And then we're going to fold this back so that it's all in line. Lovely, lovely. And then we're going to make our little beak. And then we're going to turn it into a diamond. These are so easy. So easy. You literally could sit and make like 30 of them in 10 minutes. They are just super, super easy to make. And I think that they look great when you pop them in a journal or they're great for um, happy mail or swaps. Look at that. Isn't that cute? There we go. Okay, let's do another one. 
Right, um, different type of paper this time. Let's do something with, oh, okay, something a bit more, a bit more modern. Right, so what have we got here then? Back up to the center, fold it in half. Try to make sure your ends are square. Do you know what, when I did a practice earlier, every piece of paper I picked up was perfect. It was all cut perfectly. They all met each other in the corners perfectly. Everyone I've done here now on video, <laughs> none of them are square. But never mind. I know you won't hold it against me. Right, bring this back down. Fold that up to the center. Again, if you need to just double check. Has anybody spotted the mistake I made on the last one? That was me flying through it too quick. I didn't do this step, did I, on the embossed one? I wonder why I had two sheets of paper there. That's okay, it's no problem. Just take that back out. And let's just fold them in. There we go. See, nothing that can't be fixed. Bring it in that way. Bring it in that way. Put my beat back. There we go. Um, and the one thing you can do while you're, um, when you've, you've just made them, it might be worth either popping a peg or a paper clip on just to kind of encourage the paper that it wants to lie that way. And it'll just, you know, Try and stop them springing a bit then, otherwise they um, they can remain a little bit springy. So if you just do that or put them under a heavy book or something, they'll soon find their way in and realise that they're meant to be in that position. But it doesn't hurt sometimes to just encourage them along, does it? Okay, it's like the new money we've got here. It's, um, <laughs> we've got new banknotes now in, in the UK and... It's, it's awful. It's really awful stuff. Everybody was calling it Monopoly money when it first came out. Um, it's, it's, I think the, 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 the thing with it was meant to be that the money was kind of like indestructible or something. I might have that wrong, but I think that's what it was. It was meant to be that, you know, even if it went in the washing machine, um, you couldn't tear it, you couldn't wash it, all that kind of thing. Um, and now we've got these, these banknotes that literally you can't even fold them in half. To put them in your wallet they just spring out you open your purse and like all your money just flies out they are just crazy and uh for my birthday um <laughs> my son's girlfriend she's she's darling she made me oh it was so cute these um she took a load of uh five pound notes and um she folded them rolled them in and made like a flower shape that was in in a little box you know, all, all this money in there. I mean, gosh, what better present could you open, you know? And um, she, she'd rolled them all up and they, it was fantastic, really good, the way that they were put in there. And she just, um, to, to secure them, because obviously they spring, she just secured them with a tiny, tiny little bit of uh, tape at the bottom. Well, I'm, I'm not, you know, it's not very often we get given money, is it, mums, you know? So I like to just leave my birthday money there for a long time. Hadn't really thought about it, put it up on the cupboard, left it in the box. And then um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we needed to change for something and I can't think what it was. I was sending one of the boys to do something anyway and I said, oh yeah, this, this, oh, you know where there's money, I got money up in the, on the cupboard. And I said, um, I can grab one of those five pound notes over there. And uh, so my son got the money down and I said, oh, right, okay, I've carefully peeled off the bit of tape unrolled the thing well of course it had found its own shape now and it's now it's stuck now in these little coils so i had, i think i was getting something from um i was getting some cards it was some uh, collector's cards from a, a chap down the road and <laughs> we had to pay with these five pound notes and they were springing out of his hand so it was quite funny but uh, i don't think he found it very funny but yeah so sometimes you just gotta remind paper the shape that you need it to be in because it does just want to return to type otherwise. So if we just pop those on there. Okay, so if we remember now what I'm doing, again, just folding the paper in half, bringing it up to the center. And you'll notice with the last one, I didn't do any measuring because when you've done a few, you should be pretty comfortable then with what's got to be done. So just bring this over a third. And another way that you can do it, if you haven't got a, a measuring thing, you can simply just bring them over together. And, um, you know, before you lay your paper down, think, right, does that look on there? And is that there? Yeah, that looks good. And then just do that. 
so that's just another quick way of doing it without actually having to measure anything um yeah okay so there we go and then back with our little broken leg as i call it and then we're going to make our duck beak and then we're going to have our diamond i like these embossed ones these are really nice i think they'll go really nicely in my bohemian themed journal because i've got another um another design team project coming up for line.arrow and i've picked a bohemian kit this time so i fancied a bit of a challenge because i've only done that one that i did with our um be inspired series so i thought yeah it'd be really good to to try it again okay seven have we got there now so i've got five there let's do one more oh this is lovely i like this paper um Okay, and then we'll have a quick look then at some ideas for how you can make them look pretty. Okay, so on the lines, just trying to make sure this is nice and square now, up to the centre. Yeah, this paper I'm using here is not quite square, but that's all right. We'll try and square him up as best we can. I'm being lazy, I should have gone and shaved a bit off, but it's not a lot, is it? Okay, let's just fold this over now. Again, just stick him on my ruler, bring it over to about seven, and then fold him up there, and then bring him over here, and fold him up there. go oh i am trying really hard to get used to i have new glasses in fact i have two new pairs of glasses look at that <laughs> it was like whoa <laughs> i went then to pick them up yesterday put them on and i was like oh i can see this is fabulous so i got my reading glasses on today which i haven't worn yet so everything is a little bit like in and out today but uh but yeah everything just looks really clear it's great so much better, so much better. Don't realize how fortunate we are, do we? Wonderful inventions. Where would we be without our glasses? Okay, there we are. So that's the last one there now. I haven't made a very big fold on that, but that's okay. So, um, one other thing that you can do, and obviously I've used um, double-sided paper for this one so I mean actually I suppose you could you could journal on that that's you know that paper's not beyond writing on so it's not too patterned but if you didn't want to journal on the inside and you just want to keep it as a pocket you would glue here across there and that would then keep that fold there shut and then you'd have your pocket inside there then um does that make sense what have I got here a piece of paper a second oh everything's nice and neat and tidy now i tidied my desk this morning don't faint in fact i tidied most of my craft room this morning i came down and i was just like no can't do this it needs to be tidied up there we go so if you pop something in there and then if you just glue the inside it will stop that gap in there um but you can leave it open you can still use it as a pocket but obviously just be careful you, that you don't miss and put it down there instead so we now got ourselves six fabulous envelopes no i haven't i've got five how did i miscount that oh i've thrown one somewhere my goodness right then i have to make one more that's okay it's not a trial here we go let's do one now with a bit of um vintage kind of looking paper so again fold it back up bring them down fold it to the center Yep, nice and straight, lovely jubbly, fold them in, fab, this piece of paper must be perfectly square because that's all going so, so well. And then pop him on my ruler, bring him down to seven. Thankfully, it wasn't 24 centimetres because my eight times heel is shocking. Sevens I can do. But eights, no. Don't make eight times, Saver. 
I think we all have those uh, those blanks, don't we, from school? And for me, it's the eight times day, though. When uh, we were homeschooling and I was trying to help my son with his maths. Oh, gosh, they were difficult times. But no, um, yeah, eights were not my strong point then either. So I think he's rather relieved to be back in now with his awesome teachers in school. And they're doing a great job. And mum doesn't have to do maths. Wonderful. There we go. That's our little beak. Now, this one, I'm just going to ink this one. So that we've uh, got a little bit of, um, just a little bit of definition on him. In all the right places. And uh, let's perhaps do them with here. And here. Just catching all those important edges. Okay. And then B, and then we'll just just around the edge here, just to make it stand out a little bit. And then if it's put on a page or if it's in a pocket that's a um, got a you know bright pattern on, has anybody noticed? I have a new dabber, <laughs> new smushy brush. I finally, whilst cleaning my room, found my little zippy wallet with on my new ends. I was like, oh, marvellous. New dabber. So there we go. So that was much easier. Okay, and then we're just going to fold down the final flap. And wiggle that line in. And there we have another envelope. Aren't they marvellous? Right, okay. So let's have a quick look at ideas to embellish. So these are envelopes there. They're the ones we've just made. <coughs> I don't know how I just did that. Seriously, I've now got... No, I haven't. I've got six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've not. I've got seven envelopes. I don't know how I did that. Oh, we're all going to rewind the video now after and think, how did she lose one and then find another one? I'm losing the plot here today. I thought that was my glasses. It wasn't. It was just hiding, I think. Okay, so there's the seven I just made, not six. Um, <clears throat> and here are my Blue Peter ones that I made earlier. So, following on with my little bohemian theme, getting all ready for my new kit. And this is what I've come up with. So on this one here, I've just popped a little label on there. So you could write something on there or stamp some letters. And, <clears throat> sorry, what I've also done is I've added an extra layer of paper to the, um, the diamond, just to give it a little bit of... Um, Mm, what's the word I'm looking for? Definition. You know, it stands out from the background, doesn't it? So that's uh, that's just a bit of a nice touch, I thought, there. And then I've got a nice little gold leaf on that one. Um, this one here, this one here has got um, a little gem on it. And I've kept that one quite plain, but I think that's quite nice. That's, that's enough. So that's another thing that you can do. Um, this one I've gone for quite a big embellishment on there. And I've just stuck a nice pretty little bow and a bit of lace on there. But obviously, just remember that if you are going to use it as a journal spot, think about where you're going to want to write. So if you're going to pop something bulky on it, pop it on the diamond because you don't need to write on the diamond bit. That'll fold out and you just want just this bit here and here, you know, or you might not write in these bits. But um, that's okay. You can pop something on there that, that'll uh, be bulky and this is not going to prevent you from writing on the inside it'll uh, it'll still sit quite nicely when you want to lean on it because we forget that sometimes I know I forget that sometimes and make things and they're too bulky and then you think oh are they gonna write on there but there we go this is the embellished one that I did earlier um embossed not embellished it's embossed I do apologize and I've just simply um glued a little bit of lace on the top which I think goes rather nice and then this one here um, I had a little bit of a play with some washi tape and then I just stuck a little bit of lace on the, the diamond and some of these um, little bead charm things that I've got that are really fiddly but I think they look quite nice. So that's just a few ideas of what you can do. Um, you know, like I say, this is a great time to use up washi tape if you've got some nice colours there that perhaps, you know, will offset the, um, the colour of the paper that you're using. 
um, you could also use some flowers. So tell you what, let's have a little look at the botanical ones that we just did then to get some ideas. So, um, okay, I'm gonna take that one out because that just is not the color paper that I would work with right now. And if you wanna hold this down and you don't wanna cover the diamond up, just pop it behind and then it'll just carry on holding your paper in place then. Um, and then you could embellish them on your diamond if you want to. So let's have a little look and see what we can do here. Okay, well, I really like that paper. There's, there's not an awful lot that um, you'd need to do with that. But if you just wanted to give it a little bit more dimension, you could perhaps get some, um, uh, some scrap paper and you could just use up some of your scraps and you could make a little um, scrap snippet. So what else have I got here? There's all the paper that I just tidied away. Oh, I know, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put a little bit of, um, oh, a bit of this on there. I've got some embossed music paper. That might actually work quite well because that'll add a bit of dimension then again on it. It'll just make it pop it a bit more. See what I mean about when you're embossing old pages and then they um, they fall apart quite easily when you're trying to work with them. Um, I just want another colour. Here we go. I've got some wallpaper here that I've also embossed, but that'll do. So a little tiny snippet of that. And we'll just ink that up a little bit. Don't want to fall into the trap really of overthinking this. You know what I'm like. Oh my gosh, it's so nice to have the sun back out today. We had such a cold day here yesterday. It was really cold. My feet were freezing all day long. Um, the weather just can't seem to make its mind at the moment. I mean, it's it's the first of May today. It's May Day, and it's the sun is out. It's, it's a nice day out there, but inside the house, you're not in the sun. It is still quite chilly. Okay, so I've just got a little layered scrap snippet there. And I'm just gonna pop that in the center there, I think. Because it's just a bit, something a bit interesting. And we're using up some scraps then that works well, aren't we? There we go. So oh all bluey. My goodness, that came shooting out of there then. Here we are. And like I said, if you want to add something to the diamond then, I don't know, this is quite um, quite a woody feel to this, isn't it? You might want to put a button or something like that on there. Of course, I've tidied all my buttons away now, haven't I? Because I was being all organised this morning. See, this is why I don't tidy my desk. If you tidy your desk, the items that you want most then are not to hand, rather annoyingly. Um, Oh, I'll use this button for now. It's not ideal, but it gets the point across, I suppose. No, that really doesn't go on there. Okay. All right, wait, well, I'm going to leave that one for a minute and I will try and locate a button in a second. Um, This one here, this is easy. I'm going to go with lace again on this one. Oh, and I've got some nice thin stuff here, which I think would be perfect for um, watch my pin for this because it's not too thick. Yeah, I think that'd be lovely. Because this is quite fluffy, the uh, embossed paper. I love it. I do. It's, uh, I think it's great. I did a load last weekend. But um, it's just really useful to have there, I think. Because it's sounds a bit different, is not it? So there we go. Just pop our lace on the end of there. And there we go. Um, yeah, no, really grateful for the weather picking up today. Because... Um, it's D-Day today. Mum and Dad get the keys to the house this afternoon. Oh, in fact, I've got a funny feeling that's them just pulled up outside. Because she's dropping off some ephemera for me. Be right back. Sorry about that. It was Mum and Dad. <laughs> just talking about them, wasn't I? Um, they've just been down to pick up their uh, curtains for the new house. So, very exciting. Like as I was saying, we're just waiting for the call to say that the peas are ready and <clears throat> then we can start to, to move them in. So, yeah, lots going to be going on this weekend. It'll be a really busy one, I think. But 
but good busy. And uh, I just stepped out there to go and speak to them by the car and it's tried to snow out there again today. I don't know, this weather is just bonkers. Hence why I've now gone and put my jumper on. <laughs> it's not a different day, I promise. I was only gone five minutes. I'm just going to dab this down a bit. So this is another um, kind of embellishment perhaps that we can use for the, this type of gem, um, envelope. And... I just didn't want it being too white on there. There we go. Let's take our paper clip out of the way. So, um, a few of you have tagged me in to your um, envelopes that you've made, which has been great. Thanks for that, because it's been lovely to see what you've all been doing after watching um, some of the videos. Um, so if you do, uh, if you do make some of these, if you put in pictures of them on your Instagram accounts, just tag Rich and Bella Crafts on your on the picture, and um, it'll send me a notification then to go and have a nose and have a little look because I might miss it otherwise. But uh, it's great seeing um, seeing everybody's different interpretation of, of an idea because that's what it is at the end of the day, isn't it? We're just planting the seed with an idea, and then you guys are just running off with your immense creativity and putting your own stamp on it which is fab there we are so i like that one i think that one's quite cute um right let's have a look at this one here then so what can we do with this again that's um a nice embossed one we do quite like bits of fabric on there as well i suppose we could do perhaps a little snippet so let's have a look what we've got here i've got some quite um almost jersey like material um, and we could do with something, a bit of lace perhaps over the top of that, and maybe a bit of this, um, underneath. Okay, so let's just cut this a minute. And let's cut it again, because that's still a bit big. stuff because it's quite small but you know like I say this is a brilliant um, way to use up scraps and snippets of fabric and paper and you can mix your paper with your fabrics um, and just use them then as uh, little embellishments because it's just something to make it a bit more interesting sometimes, isn't it? Just to make it sit off the page a bit. I might cut that fluffy bit off or not. No, I think I'm going to leave it on there because it... Oh, I don't know, actually. No, I'm going to leave it on there. It looks interesting and I promise not to overthink it because this is meant to be a quick project and an easy one. <laughs> And these things only stay quick and easy if we don't sit overthinking everything, don't they? There we go. So, yeah, nice long weekend as well, because obviously it's a bank holiday here for us in Wales and England. I don't know if it is in Scotland, I think it is. Um, so, no school on Monday for the children, which they're all very pleased about. I think the novelty is wearing off already. Um, but hey, who's not pleased to have a day off school, eh? Even when you've been off for six months. Because it'll be half term before we know it. And then we'll have, was it, six, seven weeks, I think, then. And then the children will break up for some holidays. And that'll be another year done. My gosh, I don't know where the time's going. There we go. Now, with these... Um, with your diamonds springing it up like i've said sometimes it'll, it just helps to pop something of weight on to the front of it 
and then it might just prevent that then from um, popping out. Let me see what I've got in this box here. Being as I so cleverly put all my buttons away. See, it's not good to hide up, isn't it? Um, my mother walked in, she took one look at my desk. <laughs> she said, you would never know watching the videos and all that mess is all over your desk. <laughs> I said, no, shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> it's not that bad, it's just a lot on my table, that's all, because I'm, I'm in the middle of sorting and time was going on and I thought, if I don't do my video now, I'm going to be contending with all the noise when everybody's back in the house later so I'm just halfway through there we are I'm gonna pop that paper clip back on there now just to let that carry on holding that in place but there we go the sad dries we've got a little button on that one um what other one should we do let's do this one and let's use a bit of washi tape I think okay so if we're using a bit of washi tape Bear in mind, obviously, all these pieces do fold out, so it might be easier for you to perhaps look at where you want to put a bit and then just fold it out. So I'm going to use a bit of this green stuff here, because that'll be a bit different. Oh, she says, I've got to try and open the end of it now. I must remember when I tear it off to fold a bit back so that I can easily open it. How many of you with these larger ones though have opened it and then you pull it and then it's like a bad bit of tape and it, it just winds around and then there's always this one bit left. Oh, my gosh, I've gotten in a mess in the past. I think that's why I don't use mine very much because I just find it really fiddly and it just seems to have a life of its own. Right, so if I cut that off in a second. Just so I can try and leave a neat bit on there and then we'll work with this bit here. Okay, so let's perhaps just put something down the corner there. Is that the right shape there? Yeah, that goes quite nicely there. And then we'll take it as far as we want and then we'll just tear the rest away then, I think. Now, of course, you could collage onto these if you really wanted to, but obviously just bear in mind, you don't want to make them really bulky. So, if you, um, that's why I just thought that perhaps washi tape was probably the easiest thing to, to use to just add a little bit of, you know, definition, interest, whatever the word is. Um, because if you're using uh, other pages, you are running the risk then of, of creating a lot of bulk and um, we don't like bulk do we bulk is not good in journals no it is not because we uh, we like to put lots of things in don't we so we need to keep it as flat as we possibly can there we go so that just looks a bit more interesting now with a bit of color and I might just pop a bit of a little bit by there I think so it kind of gives the impression that it's oh no I don't like that angle on it <laughs> okay let's try that again it doesn't like me the washi tape I don't know what it is it just I just can't work with it and I really want to because it's just it transforms your page sometimes and I've watched loads of um, of like videos on Instagram and YouTube of people using it and it, the things that they do is so effective with the page and then I look at one <laughs> I just like I just can't do that I just can't see it it's not good no so you could just leave it at that and then you've got a bit of a two-tone envelope going on there um, or again you might want to add something onto your diamond but but I quite like that. I think that would look nice in a botanical journal. Um, you could also add stickers. That's another easier option. So if I just grab my... Oh, sorry. Squeaky chair. My sticker book. Now, some of you asked me where I got this book from. I did have it out in a 
video a couple of weeks ago or last week I think it was um, and a few of you did ask I did put the link for Amazon to my sticker book but this is my sticker book Sorry, a bit of tape on there uh, the Antiquarium sticker book I love it it's fantastic um, and quite um, quite different really quite um, just unusual styles Cutting stickers out to send to my pen pals, um, but you know, if it's, it's just so many different things you could do in you. So obviously, if you were doing like botanical themes or um, <laughs> I say a seaside theme, then but um, you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> I can't get the point now. Aquatic, you know, you've got like the shells there. You've got these are quite unusual. They're very unusual, in fact. Oh, I wonder if that fit on me. The only, um, the only thing I find that does, um, you've got to think about, is that when you take the sticker off, there is a bit of colour from the book um, on there, so I do tend to just ink around it, and then it doesn't really matter then. Oh, actually, that might be quite nice. No, I like that yellow one. I think we're going to go with the yellow one, because I'll be all day otherwise. Where did it go? There it is. And I think that'll go quite nicely on the top flap. So... As, you, as I was saying, like you've got these, it leaves that pink edge around it. Not that there's a problem with that, but if you're putting it on pink paper, it would look fantastic. But I think it just looks great if you just go around the edge like that with my smushy brush. My new smushy brush. There we go. So let's move that out of the way. nicely on there. Rather nice indeed. And we just add a bit of ink so that we make it stand out. It looks really good. Sorry, I'm, my small talk's not great today. I think I had about two hours sleep last night. I saw the light break at five o'clock this morning. <laughs> the birds tweeting outside and I was like oh my gosh the alarm's gonna be going off as soon I need to get some sleep just could not sleep couldn't switch off so much going on and I, I've got this new Netflix um well it's not new it's not new by any uh stretch it's new to me um white collar I think it's called um and it's about uh an FBI agent and a con we used to be a con artist and the FBI agent had previously caught him and um, then he wanted to start this like white collar crime um, section of his of the, the FBI and they, they bring this guy out of prison early and put a, a tag on his ankle so that he can be like a consultant for them because obviously who better than to catch a thief than a thief or who better to catch a con artist than a con artist. Um, so it's you know it's still just little episodes. I think I'm on like series three now. So I've been binge watching those at night, um, in bed, <gasps> which is probably not good. But well, if you can't sleep, you can't sleep, can you? So may as well do something productive. But it's it's really good. It's quite funny as well. So that's probably why I was awake late last night. I'm just looking for something to add. Oh, I've got a little yellow button here. That'll do. Just happened to having that bag of bits for there. That'll do nicely. So, I think then, I'm just going to put that on there. I wonder if we could take the bigger button, because I like that one as well. Um, what do we think? Yeah, I think that would work. Um, I'm just going to put a little bit of fabric around that, so that it doesn't just get lost on the uh, page. Uh, what have we got here? Do, 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 do. I think this will do. jar I'm sure if I, I had to upgrade now my little jar is now a big jar so uh, look at all my bits in there that's from cutting all those fabrics for the uh our vintage sale yesterday it was ended up with loads and loads of um 
fluffy bits then. Right, I'm just going to use a paper clip for my one, just to keep that in place a sec while I try and stick this down. Um, and I'll just cut that bit off there. And I'm not looking to cover the triangle, so it doesn't matter about it being straight, it's just there to set another layer on there. So, um, there we go, that looks pretty good. And we'll just glue that on there like that. Take that out of the way. And then pop the button on the top. And I think then that one is done. Now obviously you could stitch that onto a bit of fabric first if you wanted to have the, you know, the, uh, the cotton marks through the button, just to add a little bit more. But uh, I think that looks Quite good. I'm going to leave that on there for now just to help that get into shape. There we go. So let's just quickly go back over what we've done today then. So we've looked at um, how we fold the envelopes. So I'm just going to open this one back out just as a reminder. So again, we've taken a square of paper, we folded it in half, then we've opened it up, then we've taken the bottom flap and we folded it halfway, then we folded it up again. Then we brought this in one third, this in another third. We have made a duck beak and then a diamond. And then we folded down our flap. I need to glue that on and popped it in there. And hey presto, we have a cute little envelope. And let's have a little look now at the ones that we've embellished. So we've got this one here. And we've got this one here. And we've got this one here. Let me take these off now. There we are. See, they're starting to sit now. Look, sit. It's like talking to a dog. And we've got one there. My washi tape needs a little bit of glue, I think. So that's that's a plain one there. So we'll just leave that one there for a second. And then we've got these ones here. Then the, my blue beetle ones that I did earlier. And then another one. But a minute, and we've got another one there, and then we've got another one there, and another one there. So, can you see all of those now? Yep, yeah, good. Okay, I'm actually in frame for change. So there we go. So we've got buttons, we've got uh, gems, we've got embellishments, we've got washi tape, we've got lace, we've got fabric and paper snippets. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Okay, I hope you enjoyed um, making those with me today. Um, like I say, if you do any of your own projects, it'd be great to see what you've done. So tag us in on Instagram or, or post them up on, um, on the Facebook group. Um, but other than that, I hope you have a great weekend. And whatever you're doing, keep safe and look after each other. And um, we'll be back with you very soon. Take care now. Thanks for watching. Bye.